The Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia signed $7.7 billion worth deals with Egypt. Why did he do this? Why did he sign these? What's the motive behind this? Stay tuned to find out. According to a statement from the General Authority for Investment in Free Zones, Egypt and Saudi Arabia inked 14 investment agreements, totaling $7.7 billion on Tuesday. The agreements, which were signed at Gafi's headquarters, cover many industries, including infrastructure, cybersecurity, IT, e-commerce, medicines, green hydrogen, and petroleum. According to the announcement, one of the agreements called for the production and 25-year transmission of 1,100 megawatts of wind energy in the Gulf of Suez between Saudi Arabia's ACWA Power and the Egyptian Electricity Holding Company. Saudi Arabia has provided Egypt with billions of dollars for financial support. The recent agreements were made because Cairo is struggling with economic knockoff effects of the Ukraine war. Egypt's president at Cairo Airport welcomes the Saudi Crown Prince. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was welcomed by Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi on Monday evening at Cairo International Airport, according to a statement from the presidential spokesman Bassam Raidi. According to the statement, bin Salman and el-Sisi will talk about bilateral ties and measures to strengthen them in numerous domains and regional and global political matters of mutual interest. Bin Salman is on a two-day official visit to Egypt. According to sources who spoke with Reuters this week, Ben Salman and El Sisi will address the regional effects of the Ukrainian conflict and preparations for the U.S. President's Joe Biden's visit to Saudi Arabia next month during their meeting. Egypt is the first stop on Ben Salman's three-nation regional tour, which also covers Jordan and Turkey. Egypt and Saudi Arabia have enjoyed cordial ties over the past few years in various political, economic, security, and investment areas. They have also consistently coordinated on pressing regional concerns. Saudi Arabia and Egypt Agreements Saudi investment groups signed the agreements with the Egyptian government and private sector companies in the presence of the Saudi Minister of Trade and Investment, Majid bin Abdullah al Kasabi, the chairperson of the Board of Directors of the Federation of Saudi Chambers, as well as representatives of more than 60 Saudi institutions and businesses. Allah El Said, the Minister of Planning and Economic Development, Mohammed Shaker, the Minister of Electricity and Renewable Energy, and Mohammed Abdel Wahab, the CEO of Gafi, were the representatives of Egypt. The agreements signed today mark a qualitative turning point in investment relations between the two nations, not just in terms of material value, but also in terms of added economic value to support the infrastructure, logistics, and technology sectors which will strengthen the Egyptian economy, according to Abdel Wahab on Tuesday. The CEO of Gafi also referred to the recently released state ownership policy document, which demonstrates Egypt's desire to promote equality, increase market forces, and strengthen the private sector. According to earlier statements by Prime Minister Mostafa Madbouli, the state ownership policy document identifies the sectors from which the Egyptian state plans to withdraw, reduce or increase its presence over the next three years to raise the private sector's participation in public investments from the current 30% to 65%. The signing occurred during Saudi Arabian's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's two-day official visit to Egypt, which began on Monday evening when President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi welcomed him at Cairo International Airport. In June 2021, during his final trip to Egypt, the Saudi Crown Prince met with the Egyptian president in Sharm el-Sheikh, nearly three weeks before the Gulf Cooperation Council 3 Plus Summit, which will be hosted by Saudi Arabia and take place from July 15th to 16th. The Crown Prince is in the country as part of a three-leg tour that will also take him to Jordan and Turkey. The GCC leaders, the presidents of Egypt, Jordan and Iraq, as well as U.S. Vice President Joe Biden, who will be making his maiden trip to the Middle East by visiting Saudi Arabia, Israel and the West Bank, will all be in attendance at the summit. Saudi-Egyptian Commercial Cooperation The organization of this big event is a reflection of the strength of the historical and economic links that bind the two fraternal countries, the CEO of Gafi emphasized Tuesday. Egypt and Saudi Arabia have enjoyed cordial ties over the past few years in various political, economic, security, and investment areas. They have also consistently coordinated on important regional concerns, 
According to a recent report released by the Federation of Saudi Chambers, the value of trade between the two nations reached $14.4 billion in 2021, which was a record-breaking figure and a rise of 87% from 2020. Egyptian imports to the Saudi market total SAR $15.7 billion, which is $4.18 billion a record surge of 60%, while Saudi exports to the Egyptian market total SAR $38.6 billion, which is $10.8 billion. Before the Russian invasion of Ukraine in late February, which raised commodity prices, decreased travel expenditure, and drove investors out of developing markets, bankers say they were already concerned about Egypt's current account and budget deficit. Additionally, the Saudi press agency reports that more than 6,800 Saudi companies have made more than $32 billion in investments in Egypt. Saudi Arabia has deposited $5 billion with the Central Bank of Egypt during the present world financial crisis, and the monarchy is anticipated to make additional investments in Egypt. Furthermore, Saudi Arabia extended the maturity of other deposits worth $2.3 billion which will now be paid in October 2026 and put $3 billion in CBE before the war. What are the main goals of the state ownership policy in Egypt? 5. The program's goal is to increase public investment by between 25% and 30%, which will increase job possibilities to raise the country's real GDP growth to between 7% and 9%. The idea is to increase the private sector participation in the nation's economy and development to 65% during the next three years. This entails expanding its contribution to the nation's GDP, investments made, operations, exports, and governmental income. However, government interference in economic activity be increased to revitalize stagnant industries. This will make the environment more favorable for investments. The strategy also strives to increase social safety nets, increase savings, enforce financial discipline, and maintain the state's economy resilience against internal and foreign shocks. What kinds of ownership structures are permitted under the policy for investments in state-owned property? The policy has established three main ownership schemes, gradually increasing or decreasing government investments in the sector per its needs under the public-private partnership mechanism, partnering with the private sector in certain fields, and distancing itself from several economic activities over three years to follow, to allow the private sector to carry out its work. What constitutes the policy's tenets? In some circumstances, the government will gradually distance itself from various economic operations undertaken by the private sector. Consider the strategic and security aspects. Improving the systems in place for distributing resources to economic activity. Creating a clear strategy to address the effects of disassociation, particularly concerning the workforce and financial performance. Establishing a comprehensive set of macroeconomic policies to stimulate the private sector. Alphanar, based in Saudi Arabia, inked two agreements. The first was for producing green hydrogen and wind energy with the Arab Organization for Industrialization, and the second was for information technology and digital solutions with the Benia Group. In the areas of petroleum products, infrastructure, renewable energy, logistics, the food industry, food security, the pharmaceutical sector, the automobile industry, and the entertainment industry, Ajlan and Bros Holding Group signed several investment agreements with the Egyptian side. A multi-purpose terminal will be built, financed, and run by Hassan Alam, the Arab Group for Supply Chains, and a rise for ports and logistics in the Damietta port. Saudi Arabia deposited $5 billion in the Egyptian Central Bank during the global financial crisis, and the monarchy is anticipated to make additional investments in Egypt. Furthermore, Saudi Arabia extended the maturity of other deposits worth $2.3 billion, which will now be paid in October 2026, and put $3 billion with the Central Bank of Egypt before the war. Egypt's exports to Saudi Arabia climbed 17.4% year-over-year to approximately $1.99 billion in 2021, up from $1.69 billion in 2020. According to data from the Commerce Ministry, Egypt ranked as the seventh largest market for Saudi exports of goods in 2021, with a total value of $2.4 billion. The trade exchange between the two nations increased dramatically in 2021, reaching a record $14.5 billion, an increase of 88%, according to the Saudi General Authority for Statistics. That brings us to the end of today's video. Let us know in the comment section down below what do you think of these agreements. We will catch you in the next one.
Before you leave, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload.